to my channel guys, my name is James. After getting back into Barcelona and after making the video Sangria in Cambrils, I was thinking to myself on what I should show you guys next and what I should teach you. And I finally decided on making some croquetas. It's a very, very typical thing when you visit Spain. So it doesn't matter when you visit either Malaga, Madrid, or even in Barcelona, you will see croquetas in every Spanish restaurant and in every tapas bar that you go to, as well as patata bravas. Now, we're going to be making some chicken croquetas today because it's the most, one of the most common. Ham is the most common one that you will find here because ham is very famous from Spain. And then also croquetas de setas or mushroom croquettes are also very common. But there are a few other specialty croquetas that you will see when you go to a few tapa bars and restaurants. Ones with sepia as well as with oxtail and then a few others as well. And those are going to be for some later videos I, which I'm going to be making soon. So before we get going be sure to like the video down below, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done already and let's get started. Now for the chicken you can either one do more the traditional method which I showed in the empanada video by first marking the chicken, sauteing the veg, putting the chicken back in and then cooking that until the chicken is done, removing the chicken and pulling it apart when it's cold and then reducing the stock to add that back into the mix or into the croquetas which we're going to be making. Or you can get a roast chicken at the grocery store or even if you want you can pan fry a few pieces of chicken and then pull them apart. It's your choice. You can do it any way you want. However, when you start pulling the chicken apart, the more that you pull it apart, the finer that it is, the better it's going to taste and the better texture you're going to have when you make croquetas. Okay, now for the onions. After you peel them, now we're just going to cut them into bernoise. So very, very small. Now I'm going to show you another way. You can take the half onion like this. We're just going to cut it in half and you're going to take out a few of the segments like so. You can crush it a little bit and we're just going to cut very thin. And you can turn. Oops, come here. And we're just going to cut again. They're a little finer. It's easier to cut. You can. This is a little trick that you can do. You can do it the traditional way or this way as well. Doesn't matter. And if you didn't cut it small enough, you can just go through it again and chop it like I'm doing. Now the reason why we're doing this and why I'm making this is so small is because when I eat the croquettes, you basically want these onions to disappear. You don't want a big piece of onion when you bite into a croquetta. Okay, so now we're just going to put this off to the side and move on. Now we're going to get our pan, we're going to turn the fire on, and we're going to add the butter first. Once the butter melts, we're going to add the onions, and we're going to cook them until they turn clear. So about for two to three minutes, more or less. Depends on, again, how big you cut them. And then, of course, when you're cooking anything to do with a bachamel, roux, anything like this, you always want to move it just so it doesn't overcook and so it doesn't burn. You always want to control. Okay, after the onions are done, and these are about done, this is right, you don't want any color on them. Now we're going to add the flour. We're just gonna add a little bit in at a time, medium heat, and we're gonna make a roux. Okay, we're going to be, after the roux has cooked for about two minutes, now we're going to add the milk to it slowly. And you're going to get it to a consistency of more or less what you see here in the video about this. If you want the croquettes a little more liquidy, you can add a little bit more milk or not. But you have to mix it very, very well with the whisk, otherwise you're going to have lumps. 
Now you can add the salt and nutmeg. We're just going to add a little bit. You can taste it. Give it a few vigorous mixes before you taste it again to see if you need to add a bit more or if you don't want to add any more. Once you're done adding the salt and the nutmeg, we're going to add the chicken in. You're going to give it a very good stir. Mix this in very, very well. If you notice that while you're cooking this, that you need just a little more milk, then don't be afraid to add a little more. And if you added too much, then either one, you can do, well, you can cheat and you can add a little bit of flour, um, but you're going to taste it. Or you can keep cooking it on the fire until it starts to dissipate the rest of the moisture. Okay, so now I'm going to show you a little trick what I do when I make these. I'm going to take a spoon, I'm going to put a little bit of the mixture on a plate, and then I'm going to put it in the fridge or the freezer for a few minutes. And as you see here, it's more or less is sticking. It's still a little sticky, which is what you want, but it's holding together. So now after you're done, you can take another pan, either a gastro, any flat pan that you have. The, f the bigger it is, the wider it is, the faster it's going to cool. We're going to take the mixture and we're going to pour it in. And if you need, like I'm going to need two of these actually, not just one, I would separate the mixture so it cools faster. If you're not using paper on the bottom, I would highly recommend to put some oil on the bottom so it doesn't stick. And then of course some film with a little bit of oil on top so it doesn't create a skin when it starts to cool. All right, after about an hour or a little more in the fridge or freezer, you can take the film off just like this and they should be cold. It should be a little spongy as well. So you can take either a little bit of oil or a little bit of flour in your hand and you can take a little bit out and we're just going to roll. And these don't have to be perfect because this is just for your house. But more or less, you want to try to get them into about this shape. More or less, a nice size. Just put them in the flour. All right, after you roll a few of the croquettes out, now we're going to panne. And to panne is just flour, egg, breadcrumbs. Very simple. This is what you're going to use any time that you're frying. You can take a little bit of the flour off. You don't want too much flour. Put it in the egg. Do it again. Now actually there are a few methods that you can do this. Either one, you can roll these and put them in the flour and then refreeze them so it's much easier to panne. Or you can do what I'm doing and risk it a little bit. And you have to be a little careful with these. And you're going to do each one individually. But like I said, you need to be very delicate with them because they're a little soft. You're just going to do one by, whoops, sorry, one by one. This does take a little bit of time, so I would definitely suggest that you give yourself ample time to make these ahead of time. So after you've panned all the croquettes, make sure that you take your oil, you put it in a deep enough pan, you don't want a wide one because you want a bit of depth to it so you can fry. You're going to bring it up to about 180 centigrade if you have a thermometer, if not, I would suggest buying one unless you have enough experience actually knowing when the oil's ready. Then you're going to put the croquettes in, you're going to fry them until they turn a golden color. It's better to turn up the heat and fry them fast if the croquettes are still a little soft. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a problem where the croquettes are starting to open when you're frying. And that's not necessarily a bad sign, it's just not very pleasant when you want to serve it and it doesn't look very nice. But anyway guys, they're super tasty and once you make a big enough batch, you can actually freeze them after you panne. You can freeze the rest of them for later and then just fry them when you want to. Then they make an easy and tasty treat. So if you enjoyed this recipe and if you enjoyed my time showing you how to make them, be sure to like the video down below, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done already, and if you have any questions or comments, be sure to ask me down below. Thank you for watching guys and I'll see you guys again very, very soon.